Hey folks, Sam for another rate update. Today is September 2nd, 2021. We come back, we got some big numbers coming out tomorrow. The jobs report. So that's going to play a huge role in this. But then I also have, there's a bunch of uh, data out today in regards to home prices, how this isn't a bubble. I think people are jumping on my bandwagon finally. So, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, so what we focus here on the channel is what's going on with real estate, especially residential housing, what's going on with mortgage rates. So today we're gonna to tackle both of those things. Uh, we follow, or people follow me on this channel to figure out all this stuff and more. So hopefully you find some value in this. Please give me a thumbs up if you do. Subscribe down below, hit the bell. Every time I post a video, you get an alert. But here's what people at CNBC, their analyst has to say, are we in a bubble or are we in not? You might be surprised because they're backing up a lot of things that I'm, I've been saying for quite some time. So don't go away this. We're going to talk about that and more next. How are you approaching residential right now uh, as a category? Does it seem a little bit uh, too frothy or are there opportunities there? Yeah, I think, look, first and foremost, we're long term investors. We're not looking to make a quick buck. And if you look at the residential market, low inventories, low interest rates, uh, high demand, delays in construction are really still supportive of continued price appreciation. The supply side of the equation has not caught up and it will not catch up for some time. Uh, you know, a likely indication that we saw leading up to the financial crisis um, was total mortgage debt as a percentage of GDP. Today, that stands just below 50%. In 2007, it was 70%. So that still looks healthy. At the same time, you have these long-term tailwinds, including uh, age cohort, that demographically is really, really important to supporting the housing market. And that's 30 to 39-year-olds. Over the next decade, that is expected to continue to grow. You also have new entrants in the market, creating new pockets of demand. Uh, single family rental, for instance, uh, is a newly formed uh, investment market that didn't exist pre-GFC. So still long term, see a lot of tailwinds supporting the sector overall. Yeah, that institutional participation in single family home ownership and rental is definitely a new wrinkle in this market. Have you participated in that? Uh, and, you know, is that doing um, something to maybe make things less affordable just in general out there for buyers? Yeah, I think that, first of all, we do participate in it. Um, the affordability factor is is multi-dimensional. And I think, you know, one is if you look at new homes being built, affordable homes that fall below the $200,000 category are just underbuilt and underserved. And so I think it's lack of building new affordable that's really creating the issues. I think new entrance into the market is a new opportunity for Americans um, who are homeowners to create additional wealth. And I think what we're seeing now, again, is just massive amounts of demand coming from owner occupied and single family rental buyers uh, that is, you know, continuing to drive pricing. But in, in these mig in the, in the markets across the Sun Belt, where you're seeing heavy population migration, what's happening is there's just not existing stock to serve both the rental market and the owner-occupied market. So I think rather than looking at it as increased competition, it's just, again, comes back to supply needing to catch up with the demand. Okay, so that was great information. So what we find out is mortgage rates, historic low mortgage rates are really boosting up home prices, plus the lack of inventory. Well, there's, there's multiple reasons behind that part of it. Um, but let's focus in on, at the beginning here, what's going on with mortgage rates. So tomorrow, the employment numbers come out. Well, yesterday, ADP came out with some employment numbers, and they, they never hit. I don't even know why people really monitor that, that number. But tomorrow, uh, the expectations are, and I'm going to show you that here in a second, where I feel we're going to be, five, 600,000 range. I hope I'm wrong because why? The Federal Reserve says they're really not going to start tapering in, until they see 1 million plus jobs created a month, okay? So that's their focal point. I don't think we're gonna be there. I don't think we're gonna be there for the next 30, 60, 90 days. And then from there, I, I start seeing the employment numbers getting better and better and better. Why? And I'll reiterate myself like I'm a, I'm a you know scratch record those who know what a record is out there, is you have forbearances, student loan deferral, 
and extended employment benefits. You got those. Once those go away, give it about a quarter for the economy to kind of balance out, and then let's really focus in on things. So let's go over basically rates, housing, and all that other stuff right now based on the headlines. So right now, the main headlines we're going to look at is Friday's job report number expected to be solid, but the Delta variance raises downside risk. Really, the, the what they're showing right now is they're expecting 720,000 jobs to be created. Uh, well, you know, we're hoping that there's a million, but there isn't going to be a million. I can almost assure you of that. <laughs> so this is a moving pendulum because of one of the biggest variants here is the Delta variant. Okay, so we're going to keep a close watch on this. Now, why do we really care about the employment numbers? Well, because the Federal Reserve has stepped in and they've been buying up mortgage-backed securities to stabilize the market and other things, okay? And you're gonna hear what we call tapering. All right, so here's why we're focusing in on the employment numbers. The Federal Reserve had two mandates. One is full employment, two is price stability, meaning keeping inflation in check. Well, they basically kicked the road or they kicked the can on the inflation front down the road. They're like, we don't really care about that. We are focused 100% right now on the employment numbers. We're not going to step in and taper until we have consistent growth in the employment market of a million plus a month. Okay, we didn't see it last month. We were a little short. With the Delta variant and some other things, I don't think we're going to see it this month either. So that kicks that can down the road a little bit further. Okay, so that's why we focus in on the jobs number, what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, if we see that jobs number at like a million plus, all bets off. You're going to see rates probably start to raise because the tapering of from the Fed is going to come in sooner than later. That's what the thought would be. Okay, so let me explain tapering. The Federal Reserve has been buying mortgage-backed securities in the tune of $40 billion plus a month. Okay, why? Well, we know on the channel, when there's supply and demand of anything, when somebody's buying more than there is a supply, it's going to push up prices. Well, they're looking to push up prices or at least stabilize prices in the MBS market. MBS market is the bond that trades on Wall Street that is the biggest component of your mortgage rate. So as they buy in, they're going to either stabilize it or push up the price. What do we know? If the price goes up, mortgage rates come down. So what the thought is, is once the economy gets back in, in steam roll mode and they're getting a million plus uh, people employed each month, they're going to they're gonna let that go about two or three months. Then they're going to start tapering. They're going to start pulling back on their purchases. What's going to happen? What's well, going to make the MBS market prices or bond prices drop and rates go up? It just is what it is. It's just simple math, supply, demand. So that's why we're focusing on this number. I can honestly almost assure you it's not going to be a million plus. I hope I'm wrong, but I kind of don't hope I'm wrong because if I, if I if it comes in bad, mortgage rates will stay steady and maybe even go a little bit lower. Okay, so that's that part of it. So that's why we really focus on these job reports. But the variant here, again, is the Delta variant. What's that going to do? How much conflict or how much you know mess is this going to make now on the job numbers for the next 30, 60, 90 days? We don't know. Only time is going to tell. The next thing is, here's why experts believe the housing market is not a bubble. And you just saw that video, and they explained almost the exact same thing. They're basically saying the supply of homes is at a pace or is at least 5.5 million units short of where we should be, okay? So again, it's a supply demand issue. The other piece of this puzzle that nobody talks about and it still baffles the heck out of me is why are not more and more, even more homes on the market or existing homes on the market because people are sitting there saying, man, I got a lottery ticket. My house just increased in value 30% over the last year. I'd love to sell. Well, why aren't you selling? Well, I either have to sell my house and move into another house where my that house has escalated in value, so I'm not really going anywhere there. But there's still over a million people that aren't are in a forbearance, and they're not putting their house on the market until their forbearance is completely over. What is forbearance for those out there that don't know? Forbearance has basically came into effect last March of 2020. And it came out and said, if you have any conflicts or any, if you're, what's the, what am I looking for? If you need assistance, I guess, you can actually let your mortgage company know that you have a COVID related something and you can uh, ask for what they call forbearance. Basically what forbearance is, is saying, I can't make my mortgage payment right now. 
Well, there's millions of people in this, it's this program and there's millions of people still in the program. So what that does is it says, I don't have to make a mortgage payment until my forbearance is over. Well, so look at it this way. I'm in forbearance, I'm not making a mortgage payment, but if I sell my house, I either have to go rent or buy another house, so I'll have to mortgage payment. So why would I wanna sell my house now? I'll wait till my forbearance is over, and then I'll put my house on the market once I have to start making my mortgage payment. So you probably have a couple, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand people in forbearance that's probably going to put their house on the market here in the next 30, 60, 90 days. So that's also good news for the housing market. Is it going to make the, the values crumble? No, it will actually start to just solidify them and stabilize them so we don't have these astronomical price increases. So that's the, the gist behind that. And we're actually gonna do in the next YouTube live we're gonna do, we're actually gonna talk about this. Is now a good time to buy? And you'd be surprised at probably what my answer is gonna be on a lot of those and why. So now let's get on to what, what's happening in the MBS market and mortgage rates. So this is what we follow. We follow this every day. This is where we focus in on right here. This is what's happening with the mortgage-backed securities market. Again, it's the bond that trades on Wall Street that's the biggest component of your mortgage rate. As this number goes up, like I said, the mortgage rates come down. We love green. Look at over here. It's nice because we basically have been stable for the last couple weeks. We love stability in this market. You probably do too. You'd rather you know, find out that, hey, my mortgage rate that they quoted me a week or two ago is still the same. Or you know, back in this area, again, when this market goes down, rates go up. Or I said, oh, I can get you two and a half, and then you call a week later, oh, now the rate's three. That'll probably make you upset. So we all like stability in the market. So that's what's going on right now, okay? The economic calendar for tomorrow is, again, the unemployment rate on farm payroll. So we want to see what's going on right now with the employment front. The Fed isn't concerned over our uh, average hours earning or any of that. They just want to know how many people got jobs. So now the intraday chart, chart, this shows me some things, uh, you know, as news trickles into the market, it shows me what's happening, but I'm seeing something right here that's kind of interesting. We basically started the day and we dropped and then we stabilized. Look, we, we stabilized all the way to about 315 today. And then what happened is we have a nice upward momentum here, plus two green candlesticks right here at the end. Well, those candlesticks basically mean there's more buyers in the market than there's sellers. So that is good. That means prices are going up, okay? There's more and more buyers in the market. They like what's going on. The interesting thing here is we have a lot of buyers at the end of the day, okay? So what's gonna happen tomorrow? All these employment numbers are gonna come out before any of the markets opening, the stock market, bond market, anything. So why would people be jumping in now to buy the bonds if they think they're gonna plummet tomorrow? They might know something we don't know, saying insider trading, but hopefully that's a good signal that tomorrow's number is going to be bad and mortgage rates even get better. But we're going to be sitting here on eggshells watching this meticulously for those out there that we have not locked in yet. So now let's go on to where are rates today? And I get this, uh, I post this every day. It's a report by Black Knight and they're a, basically, let's say it's a survey company. They send out uh, surveys all over the country to mortgage lenders all over the country. We respond back with our 30-year terms. Now, guys, everybody keeps asking me, what are the 15-year terms? I'm working on it. Trust me. But the biggest demand we have is on 30-year 30 30 year rates. The biggest demand mostly everybody has is on 30-year rates. That's why Black Knight reports 30-year rates. So here's where rates are right now nationally, okay? And it's 30-year conforming, jumbo, FHA, and VA. They're right here, Okay. One day, seven day, four week delta. Delta means change. So how much did they change over a day, a week, a month? One basis points. What does that mean? Well, in numeric terms, it's 0.01. That's it. Well, one hundredth of a, pers or a, a, a number that moved over here. So meaning yesterday, if rates are one, one basis point higher today than they were yesterday, that means yesterday this was 3.05. Is that really going to change your mortgage payment by maybe a couple pennies? So basically think of this as zero. Think of this as zero. The nice thing is over the last month, we're basically, the biggest one here is eight basis points. So again, 0 0.08, nothing. Okay, so really nothing has really been done over the past month, which is really cool. You can actually go back all the way to like March. We have almost the same rates 
they're a little bit better than where we were last March. So that's even better news. Okay, so that's where we are on the, the mortgage rate front. So the reason why I do this is just, if you have a rate that's much higher than this, please reach out to us. Let us consult you to give you an analysis saying, you know, can we refinance you? Does it make sense? The biggest thing is, does it make sense? I always tell people when they call, if you've ever talked to me on the phone, I'm like, <clears throat> here's what I would do. And it's personally what I would do. I always give you that that I that, that thought or that I plug into your mind. Here's what I would do. And it is truly what I would do. Um, so if you're looking to buy, build, refinance, you're in forbearance and you just need guidance, even if you're, you need a reverse mortgage, we do reverse mortgages as well. Basically what I'm saying is I hope to be your mortgage consultant. And my team, we basically deal all over the country. We hope to help you guys with all your mortgage needs. So to find out more about me and my team, please go to my website. It is therateupdate.com. It'll take you here. What I ask people to do, do one of two things. Don't hit the apply now button. I'm going to ask you to do that, not to do that. Most people are going to say, click that and move on. Don't do that, please. We want to talk with you, not to upsell you, not to do anything, to consult with you to make sure you're in the right program. We lock in at the right time. We explain to you why you're going into that program, why the rate is that, why this is that. We'll answer every and all questions you have. So two ways of doing it. Give us a call at 844-775-LOAN or what most people are doing right now, they're clicking here and they're scheduling a meeting. You can do this meeting over the phone or by Zoom, however you deem the best for you. But you can pick a day and time that meets your needs. And then at that day and time, we will be reaching out to you the way you wanted to, to answer any and all the questions that you have. So that's it for today, guys. I'm trying to make it shorter. Everybody's asking, can you shorten up a little bit? But a lot of you guys are saying, nope, just keep doing what you're doing. So I greatly appreciate your input. I greatly appreciate you guys watching. I hope today we hit 16,000 subscribers and we're getting about 10,000 views a day. So thanks to you guys uh, for making this a success. So God bless. I'll see you tomorrow. Once the employment numbers come out, I'll post an alert and let you guys know where that stands. So take care. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.